hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nate Boot. I am a developer advocate for OpenSearch. I'm here to help guide everyone through our uh, very amazing, very complex community meeting for today, uh, Tuesday. Is that right? Yeah, August 22nd, 2023. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, we have two presenters today, and uh, it's going to be some some good content. But first, uh, as is the procedure for every one of these meetings, I'll get some netiquette out of the way. Please do introduce yourself before speaking. Uh, mute yourself unless you're actively speaking. Uh, cameras are, of course, optional. Questions anytime in chat or audio, although if we do have presenters, let's try to honor their preference. Uh, disruptive folks will be removed. Well, we've all heard these before. I'm going to repeat it just for the sake of posterity. Uh, screen, annotation, screen annotations are off. Profiles only show names. Only hosts or co-hosts can share their screen. Additional co-hosts are here to ensure disruptors are blocked. And of course, you typed in your passcode to be here and no renaming yourself. Much obliged. Thank you. Please and thank you. Some announcements. Uh, some of them look very similar, but I uh, wanted to just remind everyone that Open Search Con 2023 is coming. You know, no big deal. Just our yearly conference with a bunch of whole bunch of presenters you know, from everything from search to community to analytics and all of that fun stuff. Uh, David, are there any? Do you have any news for that? And can you can you vamp that for me? I. I, I I don't know that I can do any better job that you did. Check out the schedule, though. Your favorite people are going to be there, which is actually probably just about everyone in this meeting. So I uh, hope to see you all there. Yeah, it's going to be red. Uh, I do uh, want to push the hotel booking link because uh, it is a special price reserved just for people going uh, to Open Search Con at the Grand Sheraton. They're nice rooms. I, we stayed there not too long ago. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, so uh, please do take advantage of that if you want to save some some money on on booking your spot. Savvy, do we have an accord? Wonderful. Well, we have uh, two two presentations for you today. Uh, Aparna, Zenia, and Jimish are here to talk about uh, their study about uh, the user experience designs for the security analytics, uh, as well as uh, Lior Perry and JD Bright are here to talk about their integrations for open search using the, uh, what is it, the simple schema for observability? SSFO. All right. Uh, well, if nothing, if nobody else has anything for the good of the order, I will yield to the more interesting people here and give it away to Aparna, Zinnia, and Jamish. Great. Thank you so much, Nate. Um, maybe I'll get started and then I'll hand it off to Aparna and Zinnia. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jamish Shah. I'm on the product management team here uh, for OpenSearch and looking forward to an uh, exciting conversation today about security analytics. I'll just take a few minutes to just introduce uh, you folks to security analytics. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with it, uh, but some of you may have not uh, had the chance to explore it. So I'm going to just do a quick few slides and then show you a very quick demo before handing it off to Aparna and Xenia for, the, um, for their questions. So open search security analytics, but uh, why do we need security analytics, right? I'm sure uh, you all have heard about uh, security breaches becoming increasingly common. And you know the best we can do is to make sure that we have a secure environment. Uh, we are staying on top of these breaches, uh, detecting them early enough so you have the time to take action before uh, you know, before it goes too far. And I'm sure you guys have heard of uh, major airlines that confirmed a data breach uh, that allowed an unauthorized actor to gain access to some of the personal information of their customers and their employees or perhaps a major oil pipeline that was shut down entirely as a result of a malware or ransomware attack. 
Um, there was also another one about a major rideshare company that was impacted as a result of a social engineering attack. So attacks are, are increasing every single day. And not only that, the complexity, the attack surface is also growing because there's just so many interconnected devices uh, you know, in, your, in, your, in a customer's organization. And it's just so many points of entry for the users to, to come into the system. So it's really important to uh, have a good security analytic system that can help you to analyze what's going on uh, in the system, what's going on with different users logging in, different traffic patterns, any potential threats in your organization. Um, the way we do that is with open search security analytics. Uh, this was built with completely open source and customizable rules. I'm sure many of you have heard about Sigma rules. It's a uh, security rules uh, standard or a common format that you can write your rules in and then it's interchangeable across many different solutions. So, you know, open search is open source. So why not use open source standards? So we, we are using those Sigma rules standard out of the box, which means you can bring your own rules. You can customize any rules. You have full flexibility on what you can do with these rules. Um, Certainly you want to monitor the adversary actions across devices, hosts, and applications. It is not enough anymore to be monitoring like specific uh, events, but you need to have a comprehensive picture of what's going on. Uh, very commonly attackers will move through the organization through different assets over a certain period of time, having the ability to tie all of those pieces together and visualize them it's, is really important. Uh, security analytics also does real-time threat detection for you as the logs are coming into the system. We are uh, detecting potential threats in real time. Uh, many customers tell us that you know today they have to clone this data across many different solutions and there are different point products that only provide specific analysis or capabilities. But given security analytics is building on the open search capabilities, we already have a lot of these capabilities like alerting, anomaly detection, uh, dashboards, visualizations, and things like that that you're building on. So you can technically you know, lower the cost of um, uh, bringing this data into a, a single solution and also lower your cost for like longer term data retention. <clears throat> So quickly, a few things that we do provide with security analytics. Here is uh, this out of the box content mapping. So what does that mean? So if you're bringing in, let's say Windows logs and Windows logs have their own format versus you're bringing in VPC flow logs, they have their own format. So many of these log sources have their own formats. So we have out of the box mapping functions that know how to map these fields into a common format so that we can run the Sigma rules on, on top of those log sources. So that we do out of the box mapping for many of the log sources. Uh, in addition, we also provide you out of the box uh, security rules for many of these log sources. So if you're bringing in, let's say, uh, Windows logs or uh, Office 365 logs, we already have rules for you that's available out of the box that you can just you know hit the ground running as soon as the logs are coming in. But then you can also create your own rules if you wanted to or tweak those uh, out of the box rules. Uh, there's a centralized view for uh, you know for security analysts really like to you know try to see all this information in one place rather than having to move around. So we have a centralized view where you can see the top findings, what are the top alerts. Uh, you can see the like the distribution of uh, security uh, threats uh, in your organization in, in all in one page. But then you can you do have the tools for aided investigations into investigating why a specific uh, security finding is a threat and finding more information about that. Uh, as I mentioned, we build on capabilities of open search, one of which is alerting. So we this comes out of the box. So anytime there's a security a threat, you can configure destinations to send uh, these alerts to and notify your stakeholders. Uh, one of the key features we added recently is a correlation engine. This has been a very popular ask from our users and customers is uh, they want the ability to correlate events across different log sources, meaning that if there was a failed login followed by a successful login, but then also something else in another log source, 
they want to correlate that, then do something about it, right? Those rules are much more uh, efficient uh, to, 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 uh, for the lack of a better word, but uh, customers want that ability. So we have the correlation engine that can help you find related events in the single panel um, and also provide you a visual way on, on, uh, on navigating those events. <clears throat> and uh, just quickly build up the investigation workflow here for you. Um, this should be very familiar to most of you, but essentially we have something called a detector. So as your logs are coming in, you would have to at least point us to your logs saying, hey, my Windows logs are in this index. So I, I, we can create the detect. I mean, you will have to create the detector where we can walk you through that, that flow and provide you out of the box Windows rules, uh, for example, in this case and then you can configure the alert. So it's kind of like a set it and forget it. So once you've created it, then you just you know hope there's no security findings, but if something does happen, then we will create these security findings for you and uh, give you additional information. I will probably do a very quick demo in the interest of time here. So I'm gonna reshare my screen and, okay, perfect. Um, so security analytics is just another plugin, like all the other open search plugins, you can find it in the left panel here and the left navigation bar. And once you're in security analytics, you'll see that there's a landing page that gives you some information on the trends. Uh, you know, are there any, any security findings, any active alerts that have not yet been acknowledged? You can see all the recent alerts here um, by severity, you can see the recent findings. Findings, think of findings as, you know, if something happened, we, we don't want to start, uh, you know, raising the alarm, but we want to give you that information that this looks like a potential threat. So then you can decide, yes, I want to be alerted about that threat uh, to my Slack or to my email uh, or whatever the mechanism that works for you. And you can you can decide that, but we will generate those findings in any case once you have given us the uh, date, uh, given us the pointers to your data sets. And then there's these uh, detectors for different log types. So as I was explaining earlier, you can have a Windows detector, you can have a detector for your ADL app logs, VPC flow logs, and so on and so forth. And you can pick and choose specific rules for every detector. And this shows you a distribution of some of the most commonly occurring rules that have been matched uh, as the logs are coming in. This is across all the logs uh, that you're monitoring, right? Not just a specific log source. So this is a really useful view if you're trying to get a snapshot of what's happening uh, in your system. And then we have separate tabs if you want to dive into that on if you want to see specific security findings on, uh, you know, hey, something happened, it gives you information about why we think it's a potential security threat. We give you the exact document that triggered that finding. And you can also go and see surrounding documents because that's typically what an analyst wants to do next. Is what happened before or what happened after? So you can do that. Uh, not only that, so I talked about correlations earlier. According to this finding details, it's telling me that there are some additional findings in the system that may be related to this finding. This is this is a lot of great uplift that we are doing um, for our users because normally analysts would have to go and do this manually across um, running different queries, different visualizations, dashboards, but we are doing this out of the box based on some of the correlation rule configuration. And this, this workflow our customers have told us is very valuable. It gives them the information in a snapshot here. And for every finding, you can decide uh, what type of alerts you want to create, where you want to send those alerts. So you'll see a bunch of these alerts here. Most of the ones here are just active alerts, but once you acknowledge, then you can also change the alert state to, to back to acknowledged. Um, and then correlation rules, I'll quickly show you guys the, uh, the graph. So it, it does the correlation between the different types of events. You can hover and get more information or you can click and look at the specific finding and why we think it's correlated or it's uh, you know, uh, related to some of, some of the other findings. So you can do that, the, the, there's a visual graph uh, here for you to do that. 
and um, and the detector workflow. So I'll, I'll, I'm not going to walk through creating a detector, but I'm going to show you an existing detector that shows you like, hey, this, this is a detector for my AD logs. Uh, this is my data source. Uh, this is the log type. It's running every minute. And these are all the rules that were provided out of the box, right? So if you were to create a detector, you didn't have to, you don't have to create rules for AD LDAP logs if you don't want to, and then you can just use out of the box rules. And then we also have some field mapping. So this is what I was uh, referring to earlier is we already know what fields to look for in some of these common log sources. So, so we can do that mapping for you. And it shows you some of the alert triggers. Uh, that's not coming up here. But uh, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show. So maybe at this point, I will hand it back to uh, uh, Aparna here and, uh, you know, to take this from here. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Jamesh. And hopefully you guys can see my screen. Um, as you know, I'm the researcher on the open search team, uh, helping the uh, security analytics team as well here. Uh, a couple of quick updates for you is as we're helping uh, Jamesh and Zinia as our UX, um, uh, UX designer. Um, and so she has some mocks. And as we're making UX changes, we definitely want to hear from you, our customer. So we have a study that is up on um, uh, user Zoom. A little bit about the study is in our forum, and I just posted that here. The link to the actual study is here. And if you can go in and take the study for us, not obviously not now with the Zoom on, but it's recommended that you take it when you know, you're doing nothing else, you're looking at the mocks, you're providing some feedback. Sydney is going to talk a little bit about her uh, um, study about her mocks with you as well. But this is kind of a nice for those of you who have not taken a study on user Zoom before. Um, user Zoom will ask you for permission to um, kind of uh, take a video of your face, just like we're doing on Zoom here. Uh, it will have you do a voiceover talk and then also provide feedback and comments. When you do provide feedback, um, you know, be as, uh, you know, provide as much feedback as you need. Uh, if you can also talk out loud, that's also very helpful. Uh, and it is recommended that you take the study on Chrome um, because with Firefox, it gets a little, it doesn't uh, integrate very well with user Zoom. Um, so just wanted to shout out and say, we're doing this particular study just for feedback on UX and we would love to get your uh, input in. As always, for any user input, uh, Chris has given us some uh, echo mugs, open search swag, who doesn't want those? So definitely, um, you know, take our study and give us input on that. Jimesh, uh, Zini and I are also um, starting off with some segmentation studies for uh, security analytics. We did hear back from you in the quarterly survey, Q2 survey. You should be um, getting updates on those very soon. We shared it within our team internally, and it is ready to be shared with the community as well. So based on uh, Q1, we had some feedback on role-based kind of ways to think about our users. We're now developing that further, very specifically here for the uh, uh, security analytics as well. As you can see, Jimesh is showing one particular use case, and we are curious to build that out to multiple use cases as well, like we're doing for both um, log analytics and search users as well. And then I'm just going to drop my uh, the email here for the uh, for any kinds of questions. If you do get stuck with the um, user Zoom and you need some help, uh, or if you have any questions, any general questions about the research and um, user feedback that we're doing, feel free to uh, send me a note. Happy uh, to respond to you on email as well. It's open search research at Amazon.com. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Zinia. Hi, everyone. My name is Zinia. I'm a UX designer at OpenSearch Project. And I would like to talk more about this uh, usability study so you know what to expect and what it is all about. So first of all, I would like to uh, for everybody just to put the face on, on the work that we're doing on security analytics uh, UX. And I know it might be hard for people just give like constructive feedback if they know that the person on the other side is would react to that. But that's the beauty of it. We have this unmoderated study and you can take it uh, any moment when you have, I would estimate like 15 minutes because most probably we are talking to people who are familiar with open search, general navigation. So what is it about and what to expect? I will just uh, show a couple of screenshots really quickly so you would know what to expect. Let me share my screen super quick. Can you see it? 
Yes. Yeah. So uh, one of the concerns might be like using this uh, unfamiliar tool. It's going to ask a couple of questions. You can see like it's user Zoom tool. Uh, you can see it in the URL, but we also have open search logo here. So this is the basic explanation of like what this study is about. Uh, it's kind of a lot of uh, setting up screens at first. Don't be afraid of that. Like consent to your like legal consent that is required for any study, basically. Uh, you would need to grant access to your microphone and video so we can get uh, quantitative feedback as well. So where you actually clicked uh, while you were performing the tasks. So the study is like a survey on steroids, uh, a couple of questions, and then you will just need to go through open search UI. It's an actual instance, not the mocks. So it's all should be working um, seamlessly. It has some sample data uh, included. So you will just follow the prompt, like go here, do something like click here and there and see the result and report success. And we will see where you get stuck, maybe where you clicked uh, afterwards. Of course, it's uh, the whole data will be uh, anonymized. No questions here. Uh, again, if you have any more questions, you can reach out to me or Parna. So I'm just showing like all this bunch of screens. They could be easily clicked through, like using microphone. And here's a short video on how to think aloud. If you up to this, we would appreciate like feedback. Okay, I can, cannot find this button. Okay, like it's not enough contrast. I, I can't figure out what this term means. Anything you might want to share. And after each task, we ask a couple of questions. What was difficult? Like what are the problems that you faced? super quickly, I would say the whole thing would take you maybe 15 minutes, something like that. Um, one of the questions that might uh, arise is like, if I'm not a security analyst or like security operational like worker or something like that, can I take the study? Of course, yes, because we're looking for usability feedback. So any discrepancies, potential points of frustrations, uh, just to uncover those would be extremely beneficial for us to improve. Uh, if you ask like, what is it for me? First, you can directly influence UX design, like I swear. And uh, you can influence like overall usability and like the product that of course open source. Uh, also, it might be just fun. Uh, so please go for it. And if you don't feel like taking this uh, study, even though it could be done like any time, day or night, uh, because you're not engaged in the conversation, please feel free to reach to us uh, through a partner's email. Or one extra good uh, way to do that is uh, our public Slack. We have security analytics channel, uh, which is new. Any feedback on like any aspects of UX is also welcome there. So I'm gonna drop the link to the Slack, if you don't have it, probably everybody has it already. Uh, find security analytics channel. Any feedback is always welcome. Uh, we're looking forward to maybe have a person call or something if somebody is up to that. So yeah, thanks. I think that's it. Any questions? Is there an expiration for the survey? How long is that going to be up and accepting participants? Uh, I think we set the uh, limit in like two weeks, uh, September 15, for okay. the study to be closed, just so we can set some time frame. Thanks, that's a great question. But we obviously want feedback sooner rather than later. We don't need to wait for the two weeks. We really need the feedback sooner. Awesome, well, thanks. I think there's a question for um, Jamesh, Nate. I think it's in the chat box. And uh, uh, Samuel, if you wanna ask your question. Yeah, hey, uh, so I'm Samuel from uh, Oracle. And um, I, I had a question about the, the correlation engine that was described earlier. Um, I, in particular, uh, I was reading the article reference and, um, and I was wondering how the, uh, the, the correlation score is calculated and how do we show the, um, how do we build the graph? I, is it like a, like a sparse distance between uh, two events on, on based on some features or, or like how does that work? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I have some of those details. I'm sure my engineering team will have a ton more detail there, but it's it's a based on a few parameters. One is that um, you you have to give us some information about what are the events of interest because technically every log uh, uh, log type could have you know hundreds, sometimes even thousands of fields. So based on that information that you provide, we we call that correlation rules essentially. And then based on a time window and based on uh, attributes uh, within those rules, we find the, uh, I don't know if it's distance, but we find the relation between those attributes. And based on that, we assign a score between zero and one. Uh, the closer it is to one, uh, the more uh, related it is. We think there's a high chance that they both are related and the lower it is, it's the, the other way. Um, but if you're looking for more specifics on like spe like what are, was the formula or the algorithm that we're using, uh, I'll have to ask somebody to, to point to that. Okay, uh, that sounds that sounds good, and I, I guess uh, that alludes to next follow up question, which I, I think we might, which is uh, how is the implementation in terms of like, based on what you say, it sounds like some sparse distance. And um, I, I was wondering if we use the uh, Lucene uh, native abilities to, to do the sparse distance calculation. But if you don't have the answer at the moment, it's okay with me. Uh, right, but I'll definitely shift, take yeah. that feedback about the Lucene uh, sparse calculation to the team and you know we can follow up on that. Okay, cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Any more questions for our presenters? Okay, well, I sure appreciate your time. Thanks for coming in and, and sharing what you're working on. It's uh, That's what gives our community meetings content and gets people interested. So you you do have my humble thanks for, for sharing your work. And with that, I guess I will hand it over to Lior Perry and J.D. Bright. Hey, I'm J.D. Bright. There's the guy. Senior product manager within the open search team. Joined here by Lior Perry, also known as, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna murder your alias. Um, uh, I, we had a conversation uh, with this group a number of uh, months ago talking about integrations and using the, the simple schema for observability and how we can, um, start building out some structured artifacts based on the schema. Uh, we start, we shared an integration that we partnered with Calyptia as well as uh, World Tech IT on, which was the Nginx dashboard. But we've made a lot of uh, really great progress in this front on other dashboards. And I think that um, it's high time that we come back to this team and kind of show the progress that we've made and talk about you know, some of the things that we've learned, you know, over over the time as we've built out some of these integrations, which I think we could pass on those learnings to you as you look at integrations that you're interested in, in building into um, the project as a whole uh, for from the community perspective, as well as, you know, integrations that you want to build in from for your own perspective. Cool. Uh, Lior, take it away. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, I'm Lior. I'm working on the the knowledge side of the open search from PPL to SQL, and focused quite recently um, during the couple of months on reflecting the recent changes for observability and open telemetry into open search. Part of that was, as Joshua mentioned, the uh, creation of the simple schema for observability, which is the actual physical mapping, which is reflecting the open telemetry protocol and to some extent, uh, the Elastic Common Schema protocol. And what we've actually done here is to enable pre-canned opinionated uh, dashboards based on uh, resources, either by services or by um, products, databases, uh, network hubs, and these are all um, bundled within the catalog. So we will soon see uh, uh, what is the meaning of the catalog, 
but just to to emphasize that idea anyone can just go into the um, observability section it's actually it's under the integration but it all relates to the schema that describes observability and the indices that support the observability so once you select the integration you see two tabs one tab is the available integrations which are templates that can be installed and reviewed and the installed is the ones that you already selected to to use as your work within your working space so let's go to the available and let's say i want to just to see for example what's going on with the aws rds so i'm getting a list of assets that belong to that integration a screenshot of what is the dashboard or a list of dashboard that can be shown if I select to install that integration. So I can set it up or I can even locally try that. And everything gets arranged and pre-populated for me, including some sample data. So once I go into the dashboard, I can immediately see the pre-populated data for that dashboard being shown within the index that is conformed to that specific uh, data stream. In our case, the RDS, they can select different table databases, schemas, tables. So this gives me a very good insight of what's going on regarding to the pre-canned dashboard and the sample data that can give me some chance to review and, and get some understanding. This is very similar to all the other um, integrations that we're pre-bundling here as part of the default catalog for observability. And obviously one, one goal or this project would be to simplify and um, allow the community to be part of this contribution. So we did contribute these 10 integrations, but we also created a few tools and mechanism for the community to start contributing. This is done using the open search catalog repository. It contains the integrations for observability, which you can see here. And it contains also part of documentation, the integration creation process, what is required and how you can contribute and what is the what are the steps to, to become a, to actually generate such an integration? And there's also a concept of the integration catalog. This concept tries to bundle specific integrations that have a common agenda behind them. If we want to associate all the security relevant integrations, then we can create an integration that bundles them together, or for our use cases, that for the observability and we can have a very short glimpse of the integration uh, catalog that is auto generated for that specific um, uh, schema and dashboard and you can see all the relevant integration which are grouped in that specific catalog this catalog is versioned and has a list of resources and everything is bundled within that page it gives you a very good insight of what is going on there and what is required for uh, for you to become uh, for you to use that integration so this is the i would say the initial step that gives the user the capability to reuse and, and reinstall bundle the uh, list of assets the next phase that we're currently uh, involved in is actually bringing the ingestion pipeline as part of the as an integral part of that in these integrations. So we're collaborating both with uh, Califtia from um, Fluentbait, which are generating these integration uh, ingestion transformation that take data in the original format and transform it into the uh, simple schema, which is the uh, hotel compliance schema. And also data prepare is already in part of that process that generate these uh, transformation and helps load the original content into the well structure indices. 
Um, again, this is something we are very keen for the community to take part in and to, to be able to generate their own either integration or even catalogs which are specific to some use cases. And for that, we've created the um, creation of new types of issues, either the schema modification, which allows enriching the existing hotel with proprietary schema or for vendor specific schema or for the integration suggestion that uh, anyone can just generate an integration based on these few details that are required to specify. Either we can help to navigate and uh, to teach how to generate this by conversation and by showing a few uh, YouTube channel that we are planning to generate. All user can directly contribute and we can uh, help the with the PRs and with the alignment to the schema. And I think this is a very interesting uh, direction we're going to for the open search uh, community, which is a general purpose engine to become more structured and lean toward the domain uh, specification. As mentioned before, security is a very large domain of which are, we're currently in process of introducing integrations which are specific to these resources as part of this infrastructure and obviously for observability. And actually each domain that has its own specific structure and pre-canned assets can actually utilize and, and benefit this kind of uh, framework. And I'll be happy to answer questions or any other ideas. Uh, I wanted to know if uh, community members can contribute their own like integrations to the project. Like are they, how do they, how does an integration become official in other words? And how do we um, moderate that? So someone can come up and say, I have a better Kubernetes integration or a different one. That's a great question. So we've separated the content from the actual infrastructure that allows uh, creating of the or API and framework that actually uh, bundles and installs the integration. The content is within the open search catalog and the open search catalog is something that we very much inspired to, to be driven by the community. So within that catalog, we have schema, which is um, under observability, there's an observability schema. In the future, we'll have any other user um, requested or submitted schema that is versioned and is described within the dictionary. So we have a fully fledged concept of how to expose and how to get information from the schema uh, towards the integration. And for the integration itself, again, there is the concept of the catalog with the observability. Anyone can contribute either a single uh, integration or a complete catalog. And this, again, it's versioned and has the uh, associated fields, which is the licensing and author and source URL. So you can actually use this concept in the future. We're also planning on allowing loading of uh, integration and catalog from a remote URL, which is not specifically this um, repository. But for now, uh, the initial work is using this uh, repository as a hub of integration. And uh, for the second question on how can we have different flavors of the same, um, same resource or the same schema. So in essence, the um, Kubernetes, for example, has a schema which is bundled to the um, observability domain. So the schema is not directly embedded within the integration, but it comes from the schema that we've seen earlier. And the integration can have uh, different assets. So an asset can be one flavor of uh, the dashboard, but it can be another flavor. And obviously, if you want to create a, a new kind of integration based on this um, resource, then you can use the catalogs um, abstract layer to create a new catalog that reflects your opinionated uh, version of these assets, whether they're dashboards or alerts or any type of information. So within the 
within the catalog itself, for example, the default observability catalog, you will have our opinionated version of what is Kubernetes and how to um, project that information into the dashboard. But th this is only reflecting our own default catalog and you can uh, create your own catalog, whether it's within the open search catalog or whether it comes from your own repository that has these structures embedded there. So I hope that uh, answered the question. It did, thank you. But it also raised another one. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, so this is great. What happens when we move to a new version of uh, OpenSearch, and now one of the fields in one of our dashboards is no longer uh, valid? So are we going to have versioned integrations? How is it going to be like we have also different plugins? How how is this uh, orchestrated? Yeah. So. Similar to what we have today when we're moving from uh, old version to a new version, we have a few um, ways of um, utilizing this uh, transition, either by actually using a new integration that has a version that uh, corresponds to the new version, or by using a migration mechanism, which is currently in, in progress, it's not ready, but we'll know how to take the uh, former version and change the dashboard according to the new uh, mapping schema or the new field so that it would remain valid. So these are two options. I think, again, this is, a, I would very much like to have that, these features uh, brought up by the community and, and obviously engaged by the community. So we, we are very focused on what the community requires and what features to develop according to the actual requirement and not only to what we think is valuable. So. In general, I think that the best way for us to go forward is actually, as you mentioned, to receive requirements and to answer feedback from the community and, and whether the first or the second option would be more favorite, then we will try to address that. Thanks, Leor. Hey, I'm, I'm curious about something. How long do you think it takes to create your own integration? Like if, if you had your own software product that generated logs in a certain way like how quick do you think it is to create that integration is it really just mapping field names to another field name yeah so in essence because we're very much aligned to the open telemetry schema and we have a very good knowledge of the field and their usage and purpose it is more of a understanding what you actually need to provide within that dashboard with or within that monitoring our alerts. So when you, once you have that knowledge, it, it's kind of straightforward because most of the, the mechanism, you can just clone a, an existing template, integration template, and just tweak it a bit so it can contain all the relevant uh, metadata. And dashboards and things which are specific to your integration is something that we assume already you're familiar with. So this is not the actual, um, that's a heavy lifting, obviously, but once you already know what you're trying to to introduce and you know the content behind that integration behind that dashboard that that, that part is something that we assume the user has familiarity with so it may take from one day to a couple of days if you need to understand the the schema but it's something that once you get acquainted to it becomes really uh, fast and and uh, straightforward Gotcha. So not a huge technical challenge, just probably a lot of reading. Yeah, I think I think we will also uh, have the tutorials and the videos that we thought of making uh, uh, ready, hopefully soon, and we can guide the community uh, adding these integrations. Well, I think you've you've set yourself in a really good position for the community to just start generating integrations just based on what they know about the logs and there's always an expert about some kind of log system you know so if we can uh, pull together the expertise and make all these integrations i think uh, that's going to be pretty slick yeah and, and again we uh, we strongly encourage the community to to uh, collaborate with us and to ask questions we, we also have some domain knowledge that we can assist which is something not necessarily related to the actual infrastructure for the integration, but we can also give some opinion on how do we think that this specific specific resource can be projected. So that this is something that we'll 
very much be uh, happy to get the community to assist and, and be part of this, uh, I think, very nice agenda. Nice. Hey, I, I, I didn't read the whole catalog, but is there a, an integration for open search? Not yet, but we're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm teasing you. Yeah. Any idea what's coming up next? Do you have any idea what you'd like to work on on this? Or is it all just you're waiting for the community to uh, decide for you? So once we introduce the this basic or default observability catalog, I think the next step would be to give the community to experiment with that, to give feedback what is missing, what is not very easy to, to do, what is very nice to, to have more of that the same. And that, that feedback is, I think, essential for us to know how to continue forward. And once we have this feedback, I think we have a very good way of uh, introducing faster integrations and, and better allowing the community to collaborate with the existing content that we are providing. Awesome. I have one more question, Lior. Have you registered for OpenSearchCon yet? Are you coming? I'm coming, yes. Okay, any other questions for our presenters here? Okay, well, I'm gonna take that, uh, well, we'll take that silence as a uh, passive consensus here as, uh, to that there's no more questions. Um, guys, I was getting my, my hair cut this weekend. My barber's scissors broke and he's like, Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. And I was like, well, dude, it, sorry is not going to cut it. God, I'm, it it's even better head. that you don't have hair. Killing <laughs> me, man. <laughs> Quite good. Oh, you just had to add that part in there, David. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for pointing out my baldness. You were trimming the beard, yeah. right, right, Nate? Surprise. Yes, the, beard. the beard, yes. Mm -hmm. Very much. Whoa. I'm trying over here. <laughs> a better dad joke for next time. Awesome. Well, I don't think I have anything else for the good of the order. Uh, David, Chris, any plugs for Open Search Con or any uh, speaking opportunities that uh, anyone can visit you for? Are you are you still David Tippett? Are you still doing random Twitch streaming live to do uh, coding projects? It's not random. It's every Wednesday. But yes, every yes, Wednesday. I am. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Except for last Wednesday because I was out of town. But yes, yeah, no, working on uh what is it? The neural search plugin. If anyone wants to come and hang out and see how neural search works, um, this week I should actually be able to query it. So what kind of text are you ingesting? The open search documentation, of course. What a it's good idea. <laughs> right? Uh but anyhow, come hang out with me on Twitch. Tippy bits. Mm -hmm. Chris, do you have anything to share? Uh, cool events coming up. Uh, yeah, we're always looking for more people to present at these meetings. The next meeting is going to be out on the 5th of next month, so two weeks from today. And then I also want to tell everyone, remind everyone to register for Open Search Con, of course. Make sure you're there for Wednesday because we're going to have an unconference leading up to, to start the week off. Um, our friend Nick Kniece is going to be hosting that. We're going to have a nice time where everyone can write their idea down, the community votes on it. Nick and I will go in and, and tally up the votes and make sure we've got a nice distribution of different types of topics. And we're going to give everyone 15 minutes to do what they like. And at the end of it, if you don't get off stage fast enough, we might throw tomatoes at you. But no, we're going to have a lot of fun. Hope to see everyone there. Awesome. Um, that really is an unconference. Nathan, one, one short thing to mention that next week, I think Calyptia would uh, be joining to show what they have created for the integration. So they have generated the ingestion part that allows transforming from the source into the document that are ingested into open source. So please come and see these uh, latest developments. I think it's going to be fun.
Thanks for that awesome. reminder. Perfect. All right. Well, we all good, everyone. Well, I do. Uh, I move that we uh, conclude our meeting here and everyone have a great week. Uh, I'm going to tell you one more time to register for OpenSearchCon. I will come to your house and throw a tantrum. I'll throw a big adult temper tantrum right at your doorstep if you don't have a registration for OpenSearchCon. I don't know where you live, but I'll find out. So watch out for the tantrum. We will hunt you down. We will open search you. I have a five-year-old. I am an expert on tantrums. Oh, boy. I mean, I was before I had a five-year-old. but Oh, well. Thanks, all. <laughs> Peace, everyone. Bye.